Which let's round things up youth wise to date. First question is this Will there be a centre of excellence next season? Bearing in mind that the two years of parachute payments from the Football League will come to an end at the end of this campaign should the first team not go back into the Football League? Firstly, we hope for the best scenario, which would be we get into the playoffs, the first team do great, we go back in the Football League, which then it becomes a, a non-questionable thing. Secondly, yeah, the parachute payment stops, so there isn't any funding. The chairman said last year to all the parents uh, and ourselves that he's definitely back in the centres and the youths again. I think it's important. Uh, also, you know, the football club and, and myself involved with the youth are grateful to all the parents because of what they contribute this year. That won't change again next year because that will be what funds the coaches. You know, facility-wise we're trying to sort things out and hopefully, you know, we can progress where we've gone from this year because for me, uh, I think it's gone well. There's lots of other little nicks and bits and, and things we'd like to introduce. Over the last few months, for me, we've had the 16s uh, that have come in now and been involved with the youth team, which is for this football club to see six or seven players coming through and playing at 18s level uh, from Christmas uh, has been fantastic. You know, the Gregory Tempest, uh, the Jack Greens, the Mikey Armstrongs, Jordan Glens, all of a sudden they're playing 18s football, which is a valuable experience. You know, we've had Niall, we've had Nick, we've had Sam, we've had Elliot. All out on loan, Uni Bond playing, you know, against men's football. So that's been progression. Uh, there's been a lot of positives this year. Yeah, there's a lot of things myself and Adam uh, Baradella, the centre's manager, would like to, you know, keep implying and keep improving on. But, the, you know, the football club have said that they want the centres and the youths to keep going. I think it's important, especially with, you know, the setup that we can have and, and what's coming through. So. You know, I should think you know the chairman and, and the people on board here will be will be stating that very shortly because you know the scholarship scheme is going ahead again next year. Well, that is massive from the club's owners, isn't it? Because I mean, this is public knowledge. It costs around for a club at this level. Correct me if I'm wrong. Around about hundred thousand pounds to run a centre of excellence. So that is a big, big gesture from the owners. How long? will they keep putting their hands in their pockets should the first team not return to the Football League? Well, thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Put a bit of pressure on, depends on what a youth team manager and a youth team centre of excellence can produce through the door. You know, if we can get some of these 16, 17, 18 year olds to excel, you know, we've had a lot of interest this year. You know, we, the one good thing about us is we do things right. We learn these kids in the right manner, how to play football, how to respect each other. You know, the working hard and the, the, the ethics, desire, they've been a credit and that's passed on and that'll be passed on to next year's and the lads that have come in the building this year have, have had a lot of interest from all over the place and it's been nice. You know, we've had a young 16 out, Jack Green's been out with a few clubs looking at him. Uh, little Bradley Munn's been exceptional, to be fair to him, a first mm -hmm. year. He's had a lot of interest from other teams and yeah, we want them to stay here. We want to get them onto this football field as professionals. But also for a youth development thing and for us to see other clubs coming to watch Mansfield and seeing these players that we've got, it's a massive bonus because you want one or two gems every year. You really do. Back to my original question, how long minimum wise will the Centre of Excellence be open should the first team not go back into the Football League? They've they, being mm. the owners, have said we'll do it for at least a season. Mm. Will it go beyond that? I should hope so. You know, probably, you know, probably more of a question for them. Yeah, I think for 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 fundraising and everything else, you know, me, Steve, I'll, I'll get me me ass into gear, bless the the thing, and and get out there and do things to keep these because kids are important. Kids are important to get through the building at Mansfield. Mansfield, as in a a town, is important to get these kids and the community and the football centre of excellence running forever in a day you know and I think there's enough people in Mansfield and enough people and parents that have seen where it's at and how they're treated and how you know it has been fun this year the 11s and 12s are excelling but they're three or four years down the line like you're saying and you know every team at the moment's going forward 
and it's important that it carries on going forward. But that, yeah, it does take a lot of money. It's not, it's, you know, there's no hidden agenda here, but the least, you know, and the costs that we can get from others helping us and the fundraising bits that we can do, best scenario is if, if we say the first team go up. Worst scenario is we don't, then it's up to everybody in Mansfield, you know, the football club, us as, as youths and everybody else concerned to make sure it's a success because it would be a travesty if it doesn't keep going with what they can produce and, and the way it's gone forward. Worst case scenario then, the first team don't go up, what happens to the first year scholars next season, the first year youth scholars? Do they get one year youth deals? It stays on Steve always a two year. You know the LFE run two years, the one good thing about the LFE is it's sort of self funding except that the club put a little bit into paying towards the wages and things but most of the stuff the education is paid for by the LFE, yet it's two years but the only thing you have to find then to keep that running the little bit extra on top towards the wages and then you've got transport and paying for referees on a Saturday because hopefully uh, they'll be able to, the facilities and everything else are be sorted uh, with a very good sporting college and, and West Knots that have been with us over the last few years to make sure this is still up and running and successful. So that side of it, the the, big, the biggest expenditure, I'm not going to, you know, we're, we're here in front of everyone, is facilities. You know, facilities is the biggest thing. Uh, is a bit of cost that comes out of, of what we have to spend. And if we can get that down and people can help us to get that down, it helps us to keep going for a lot, lot longer. Of course, at the minute you're using the. Uh, well, tell us what you're using at the minute. I know well, we, we've Queen got Elizabeth Forest Town. Time. You know, Forest Town have been excellent with us, and Sutton Town uh, for the for the youth games, and then we've got Queen Elizabeth School that have been unbelievable with us again this year, and Joseph Whitaker with the AstroTurf at night through the winter, and everybody's been so helpful, and that's a good thing, because people have been going out of the way, because they can see where we're going or where we're trying to go with this how we treat the kids, how we're trying to progress the thing and it's good for them to, not being funny, have patience at time with things that have gone on during the season to see, right, we are getting there, we're hopefully we want to help them and, and it's been ace. So we, we want to keep these things going and, and we are grateful to everybody that helps. Are the parents of the players in the Centre of Excellence still contributing? Yeah, and that's massive. Financially, I mean. Yeah, yeah that's massive, steve because that's hopefully now, you know, the big thing that we've got is we sit down and we'll sit down with the you know the people upstairs, and you can cover your coaches, you can cover your coaches with that, uh, and that's about it, to be truthful. So all your coaches that come in the building, and we've got some really good ones uh, that are doing well this year, will be hopefully covered by that. Yeah, we cut it tight with a you know, but it's up to everything, and if people want to, and, and people put their heart into it, do well. And they want things to progress. They will do. How have you brought the Centre of Excellence on? Wow. You'd have to ask them. What do you, th what do you think? What do I think? I go to an environment that's a happy, healthy environment where kids are learning. Yeah, there's a few ips and bits that we need to sort out. But this year we've tried to encourage. Uh, bring coaches in that are going to encourage. Uh, Facility-wise, Joseph Whitaker is, is absolutely unbelievable. you know, And they've been excellent with us. I go Sundays and we watch and I think the biggest thing for me is that what the parents might not see this side of it is progression. The big thing for me is progression and next year it'll be no different because I'll go and look at the 16s and come around you know October, November, December again I want two, three, four 16s involved in again because it's important that these kids have a goal. It's important that they've got a progression to get to where they're going to go to see not oh we're playing 16s all year Eight, you know, the youth manager is never going to watch us, he's not interested in us and we might get a scholarship, we might not. I'd rather throw them in at the deep end and it is sink or swim because if they're going to be good enough they'll excel and progression for them is can they be tested, you know, and same, you know, we've got, as I say, it's great to see, I went Sunday morning and watching the 11s, the 13s, the 15s and it's, it's nice because the football that we're trying to play and most, 99% of the coaches now have took the culture on board that let them play. Uh, a couple, maybe 1%, 2% might need a little elbow and a little nudge now and again to understand that, that you know, shouting on and that, that's not the way we do it. And that'll definitely be changed uh, by next season 
because this has been a learning curve for us as well as everyone in the centres and, and where we want to go. We've got a bloke coming in again at the end of the season. This year that we've had forums with nutrition, we've had the referees in with respect, we'll have another one in about fitness and off-season programmes, which I think has been a way forward that wasn't there last year that's been brought in this year and hopefully we'll keep going. But that helps with having sometimes some nice people in nice places and, and contacts that have got a knowledge that maybe you think can help these kids.